Well, unfortunately, I think I've got some bad news for you guys. Uh, first of all, I'm incredibly tired. I just benchmarked 10 GPUs at a variety of resolutions and graphic settings in Starfield. And I waited until I got to the big city of New Atlantis so we could kind of do a at least somewhat of a stress test. I don't know where the most demanding area in the entire game would be. Uh, but anyway, let's start with this. You're seeing the GTX 1066 gigabyte, the RTX 2060, and the RTX 4060 at 1080p low settings. Now, if uh, let me stop for just one second, though. Now, let me show you something really cool from today's sponsor, PowerColor, with their Red Devil GPUs with their swappable devil skin backplates. It's so cool not to have to be locked into just one design. You can choose the one that fits best for you, easily swappable with magnets. We've got the uh, intrusive devil skin, which is the kind of the simpler, sleeker looking one. And we've got the mesh design called the generative devil skin. These are all really cool. They just attach on with magnets. Excellent choice for a high-end GPU. Check the link in the today's description. In this game, if you go to the low graphics preset, and it enables FSR2 upscaling by default. In fact, all of the graphics presets enable FSR by default. So if you want to go to native resolution like I'm doing here, you have to manually disable FSR. So that's what we're seeing here. And I will show you with FSR as well, but let's look at the actual results we're, uh, we're ending up getting here. We are seeing the 1060 averaging 26 frames per second at 1080p low, the 2060 averaging 40, and the 4060 averaging 63. Um, I guess we could go back for just one more second there to get that last look at that. Uh, so I want you guys to make sure you notice that. The, the brand new RTX 4060 is averaging barely over 60 FPS at the low settings, granted turning it back up to a native 1080p resolution, uh, in Starfield, the 2060 cannot hit uh, 60 FPS, not even close to it, at a native 1080p resolution, even down at the low settings, and the GTX 1060 is below 30 frames per second. That is pretty brutal. You can also see the relative performance between the GPUs here. That's not too relevant on this particular slide. But anyway, um, on the 1060 and the 2060, I decided to actually go to the low graphics preset and the low graphics preset without turning off FSR includes a 50% resolution scale upscaled using FSR. And with that enabled, uh, we're, we are actually seeing the 2060 getting near, but not quite to 60 frames per second in this New Atlantis City area. And the poor 1060 can't break 40 FPS, uh, even with this extreme amount of resolution scaling. Um, Anyway, so just saying, it doesn't look super great uh, if you're not on a very high-end GPU. Now, I thought on the 2060 and the 4060 that I would try out the actual high preset. Now, the high preset includes FSR scaling at 62%. Um, so this is actually well below 1080p resolution. Looks okay, but you can certainly see some shimmering and fizzling in motion. And here we're seeing the, um, the RTX 4060 ending up at 56 frames per second average here, and the 2060 only at 34 frames per second at the high preset. So certainly not uh, amazing, but <laughs> the 4060, I mean, I guess it looks like you have your kind of your choice between your low settings and your uh, uh, um, upscaled high settings. So here's where, uh, just to make sure that we're not getting confused, what did I just change here? I changed this GPU. So we're looking at the RX 7600 from AMD up against the RTX 4060 now. So now we're looking at a little bit of AMD versus Nvidia. These two GPUs uh, tend to perform very similarly. You, uh, a lot, oftentimes one is leading uh, over the other, depending on the game though. And here we are seeing the 7600 coming out 7% ahead at the 1080p high preset. Remember the high preset includes FSR upscaling at 62%. I'm gonna make myself smaller so I'm more out of the way of the actual screen here. I'll still bounce around and point things out. But anyway, the 4060 is a little below 60 here like we saw before. The 7600 does get below 60 at times, but does average 60 on this benchmark run. But what if we wanted the native 1080p resolution at the high settings? That's what we're looking at next. Looks like the RX 7600 is now averaging only about 51 FPS, and the uh, the RTX uh, 4060 
is averaging 45 FPS. So, and this is at the native 1080p resolution. And the 7600's lead has actually grown to 13% at these settings. Um, and that might make sense uh, maybe on the 4060's like really low memory bandwidth as the resolution increases. We're actually at a native 1080p now, maybe it falls a little bit further behind. But again, both of these brand new GPUs can't hit the high settings in a native 1080p 60 FPS. Um, I also tried out the ultra settings and it seems like it broke the 4060. I wanna actually pause this and make sure we take a look at this from the start. So again, this is the ultra preset, which actually uses FSR at a 75% scale. So this isn't even a native 1080p, we're at the ultra preset. But I want you guys to notice something here. Um, let me get back to the, uh, the uh, ultra preset here. Okay, at the beginning of the benchmark run, the frame rate difference here is about 51 versus 44. But by the end of the benchmark run, I'm down to 49 versus 35. It seems like the ultra settings kind of break the 4060 at a certain point in this benchmark run, and its performance drops massively. And uh, notice the frame time graph here starts kind of stuttering a, a lot more. We're getting a lot more spikes uh, here than we're getting over here, and the overall performance has dropped to only a little bit over 30. And the 1% lows under 30. Again, frame time graph kind of spiking up here all over. We're dropping down into the 20s now. Um, this doesn't look right. So like if I freeze the frame here, uh, we're seeing that at, at this exact moment, the 4060 is producing 23 frames per second, where the 7600 is producing 49. With this crazy frame time graph over here, something seems wrong. I don't know if this game needs some patches or NVIDIA needs some driver updates, but something is not working correctly on the ultra settings on our RTX 4060. Now switching over to the native resolution uh, at the ultra settings. So again, using the ultra preset, but then uh, turning off FSR. Uh, we're now seeing the 7600 uh, able to pull in 44 frames per second and the 4060 only hitting a 31 FPS average. And again, especially towards the end of this little segment, uh, things are going uh, a little bit bad for the, the NVIDIA GPU. Um, again, as we watch this, watch the frame rate just kind of tank here. We're dropping down into the low 20s, hitting 20, 21, while well, the 7600 still up here in the 40s. And if, you, if you're trying to blame VRAM, you can't. They're both 8 gigabyte GPUs. So it's kind of strange. Um, so here I just swapped GPUs again. Let's make sure we see what we're looking at here. So I've now swapped to another AMD versus NVIDIA matchup. This one's the 6700 XT versus the RTX 3060 Ti. Uh, these two GPUs cost... Uh, a similar price new and have for a long time. And the um, uh, the 6700 XT tends to perform pretty similarly to the 3060 Ti in most games when you're not using ray tracing, which is why I'm baffled at a 48% lead for the 6700 XT here. And yes, the 6700 XT is a 12 gigabyte GPU versus an eight gigabyte GPU, but the 6700 XT is not reporting uh, memory usage over eight gigabytes. So I don't think this is a VRAM issue. And in the same place the 4060 was having issues, I'm, I, we just saw the 3060 Ti have issues. Again, that certain segment of the, the benchmark run is, seems to be having issues on the NVIDIA GPUs, but not the AMD ones. Um, anyway, kind of strange. Uh, here we're dropping to the actual ultra preset without turning off FSR. So the, this now includes the FSR at a 75% scale. And we now see that the 6700 XT is hitting 54 FPS. Um, but guys, let's think about that for a second. The 6700 XT usually crushes 1080p. This is below 1080p. This is 75% resolution scale of 1080p. Yes, it's the ultra preset, but we're only hitting 54 in the 6700 XT and then 3060 Ti was basically broken. However, I did try dropping down to the high preset. Now at the high preset, the 3060 Ti is less broken. It seems like the high preset is less broken on the NVIDIA GPUs. Look how much smoother this frame time graph is now versus what we saw on the ultra preset. And as we turn this corner, um, it doesn't go crazy like it did at the ultra preset. So here we're seeing the 6700 XT 15% ahead, which is a little more than we usually see, but not as just weird as what we saw at the ultra preset. Although again, neither GPU is really crushing it here, even down at the high settings. Although 
Uh, here I'm now switching it over to the actual high preset, which includes FSR at a 62% resolution scale, which is a lot of upscaling for 1080p. You can definitely see some shimmering on the trees and, the, and people walking in motion, things like that. But at least now we do have both GPUs hitting close to 60 frames per second, and the 6700 XT is only leading by 9% now. So it's a lot closer at the high setting, and then especially when we're, when we're uh, resolution scaling. And we've got 64 FPS average versus 59 FPS average uh, on this one. So again, something really seems weird, especially on the ultra preset on the NVIDIA GPUs. Um, so I did, uh, since we're on the 6700 XT and the 3060 Ti, a lot of people use these at 1440p, not just 1080p. So I did test a few things out and uh, using the high preset um, with the uh, resolution scaling enabled that it defaults to, which is 62% scale, so pretty extreme, the 6700 XT is able to hit 57 FPS, close to 60. The 3060 Ti is down at 51 FPS, uh, and it's a 12% lead for the 6700 XT. So certainly you could turn things down more. You could slide the resolution slider a little bit lower. You could go bring some things down. Um, the biggest uh, uh, effects um, I noticed when tweaking things individually are like shadows and like the volumetric fog and things like that. But um, you could tweak some of those a bit more. Uh, here we're moving up some GPUs though. Uh, so let's make sure we see what we're looking at here. This is the 6800 XT now versus the RTX 3080, and I have the 12 gigabyte version, not the standard 10 gigabyte version. This kind of falls in between the 3080 Ti and the 3080 10 gigabyte. Um, anyway, performance-wise. Generally, a 6800 XT and a 3080 are fairly comparable when you're not ray tracing. However, uh, as we play this here, notice that the 6800 XT has a 25% lead. This is a uh, by the way, this is 1080p Ultra, and all I did was turn off the upscaling. The RTX 3080 is only hitting 60 FPS at 1080p Ultra once you turn off the upscaling. You heard that right. And the 6800 XT is doing better by 25%, but still only 75 FPS. By the way, the 6800 XT is, if you look at the, uh, the system requirements for the game, the recommended GPU for this game. Um, anyway, most people who have a 6800 XT or a 3080 are probably gaming at 1440p rather than 1080p. And if we move to 1440p Ultra and turn off resolution scaling so it's native, uh, the 6800 XT is able to hit 61 FPS, but the 3080 is only down at 49. This is a 25% lead for the 6800 XT again. Now, when I was doing these benchmark runs um, before I put them side by side, I hadn't noticed that it was the Ultra preset uh, messing up the NVIDIA GPU so badly. So I didn't test out the high preset. Uh, I'm curious if the 3080 would have closed the gap on the 6800 XT using the high preset the way we saw the 3060 Ti close the gap on the uh, 6700 XT. Um, anyway, if we use the actual 1440p Ultra preset, it includes a 75% resolution scale. Uh, that does get the 3080 up close to 60 frames per second. We're at hitting 57 here and 71 on the 6800 XT. Again, that same 25% uh, scaling uh, difference, right? The, the 6800 XT being 25% faster. So the recommended GPU can run this game at its uh, ultra preset pretty well, but keep in mind that the 1440p Ultra preset does include resolution scaling. Now, uh, some people also use these GPUs at 4K resolution, and so I did test that out as well, and um, it, they, neither one did great at Ultra settings, so I actually am showing this one at the high preset, and this is the preset, which includes the FSR resolution scaling. The high preset defaults to 62% resolution scale, and here, the 3080 did close some of the gap. The 6800 XT now has an 18% lead versus a 25% lead. And it's still a pretty big difference, though. 65 versus 55 FPS um, in the 6800 XT's advantage. But it is nice to see here that the 6800 XT can actually get a pretty decent 4K experience in this game. And the FSR resolution scaling does look pretty good at 4K. You can tell it's not native. Uh, speaking of native 4K though, I did try out one more tier up on the GPUs with the 7900 XT um, and a similar priced GPU from NVIDIA would be the 4070 Ti. The 7900 XT is usually a bit faster when we're not ray tracing. Here we're not ray tracing in this game, but the 7900 XT is 36% faster, which seems like too much. Again, this seems 
uh, weirdly bad for the NVIDIA GPUs. And once again, this is at the ultra preset and I did, I did switch it to native. Um, and again, this is before I had realized that the high presets seem to do better on NVIDIA versus the, the ultra ones did. Anyway, if we do 4K ultra at the actual ultra preset and leave on the FSR 75% scale, the 7900 XT is actually now able to average 65 frames per second and get you a pretty good looking and uh, playing well uh, 4K experience. Uh, the 75% scale looks pretty good at 4K uh, and the 4070 Ti is only hitting 49 FPS. It's certainly playable, uh, but you would have to turn down settings. Again, I am very curious if the high settings would perform significantly better here than the ultra ones did on the Nvidia GPU in particular. Um, if we go down to 1440p ultra settings, and again, turn off resolution scaling because we're talking about $800 graphics cards, uh, the 4070 Ti is able to hit 59 FPS at 1440p ultra, but it's an $800 graphics card. The 7900 XT is able to average 76 frames per second by the end of this scene, which is giving it a 29% lead over the 4070 Ti. Now, uh, some final thoughts on all of this, that is all the GPUs and, and settings that I managed to test. Hopefully this was useful for you. Uh, I really wanted to test out CPUs as well, but I just ran out of time um, because I am also curious if this, um, if this uh, scene, especially in like the big city area, would end up getting CPU limited, especially on lower end hardware. In this video, I'm using a 7800X3D uh, with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 CL30 RAM. Uh, I do have smart access memory as well as resize bar enabled on all of these tests if you were curious. Um, but anyway, uh, th I thought this was uh, interesting stuff. Um, I need to get to bed. I might not have time to timestamp everything, so maybe somebody can do that in the comment section because I actually have to teach a class at 7.30 a.m., uh, which is uh, approaching a lot sooner than I would like. I hope all of you have an excellent day, and I also hope that um, there's either a patch or, a, or maybe a driver update or something uh, to maybe close the gap, uh, especially on the uh, NVIDIA GPUs at the Ultra presets. And yeah, it looks like this, uh, this might be a tough one for the, um, uh, for the lower end hardware, like our 1060 here at low settings. Not looking great. Um, like I said, though, I've got to get to bed. This is what I got for you guys. <laughs>